Please allow me to extend to you the Nation of Islam salutation of peace in the Arabic language of Isalam Alaikum. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I am deeply honored and I feel such great privilege to be before those people whom the Most Honorable Boy Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is teaching us are the original people of the planet Earth. We do not take our presence in front of you lightly, but we are greatly humbled by this such momentous occasion that in a few moments we will be hearing a man not giving a lecture, not giving a speech, but a man delivering a word that those who were dead might be delivered as a result of the word. For the scripture says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God because God keeps his word. And then it became a light and shined unto the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. It went on beyond that, and then the word became flesh, and it dwelt amongst men. But the word never separated itself from God because the word is God. So if the word became flesh, God became flesh. Don't lay that at the door of Louis Farrakhan. God is able to do it all on his own. All praise is due to Allah. We believe God is a man, and that man has come to you and I. The scientists in the East did not believe that he could come and do the work that he has done. The scholars in the East did not see a need for him to come. The opposition in the West did not want him to come and our ignorant Negro leadership did not know to expect his coming. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. So in the East, they did not see a need in the East. There was no belief, so there was no entourage or delegation coming with him. In the West, there was opposition and they did not know he was coming, so there was no welcoming committee in the hells of North America. So he came to North America by himself. All praise is due to Allah. He came to a people that no one believed in. He came to a people that no one sees a need for. He came to a people that everyone is against. He came to a people that no one knew was powerful if he came by himself for people who had no one but themselves what do we look like waiting on somebody to believe in us if he came by himself let us get up by ourselves in his name and begin to do the work to help the honorable lewis farrakhan all praise is due to allah so i thank you for these few brief moments and just saying as I close that the, one of the greatest signs of the black man and woman in America is Samson. For Samson had seven locks in his hair. If you count the year that we came here in 1555, you had the one and the five, you get a six. You had the six and the five, you get 11. You had the 11 and the five, you get a one and a six. Add those two together and you get a seven because it represents the seven locks in Samson's hair. But our problem in America is that we have thought that white people were some kind of universal spiritual locksmith, but we don't need a locksmith today. All we ever needed was the key and we got the key today in the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum. Minister Rodney Muhammad. Mr. Rodney Muhammad, Philadelphia, Moss, number 12. That was just the match that's starting the flame. And the heat of the fire will soon follow. I want to acknowledge the mighty MGT captains, the mighty sister instructress that are representing 
all of, well not all of the sisters are here, but many of them are. Well, you beautiful, beautiful sisters, MGT captains from the various Mars, stand up so your people can see how beautiful you are. Look at the queen. All praise is due to Allah. Thank you. The next brother needs no words of introduction. You know him as a doctor, as that powerful minister tearing up the country from the north to the south, from the east to the west. You know him as Brother Minister Abdul Khalid Muhammad. Let us please receive him. All praise is due to Allah. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the world. I bear witness that regardless to land or label or language, there is but one God. And so we thank that God, Allah, for coming as it was written and prophesied that he would come, seeking that which was lost. And we can find no other people fitting the description of the lost brother, the lost sister, the lost sheep, except we, the 50 million or more mentally and spiritually dead black men and women here in the hells of North America. And we thank him for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, his black Messiah in our midst. And we thank both of them for finding one worthy among us that they could put a double portion of the spirit into that one and both of them back him up as the guide for this hour the champion of the liberation and salvation of the black nation the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan I greet you assalamu alaikum I promise not to be long, but I got to be strong. Our mighty minister from Philadelphia was taxiing on the runway, just getting ready to take off. I'm sure Sister Tynetta will start her taxi and just get ready to take off. But the only plane that's taken off here today is the bummer plane from Almighty God. And we'll hear from him in just a few moments. We're not the fire. We are only sparks from the fire to let you know that the fire of God is coming in just a few more moments. All praise is due to Allah. Today we need a leader that will lead us toward an economic savings plan for the black man and black woman. For we don't own a brick or stick nor a blade of grass. We don't own a rock or rail or spike or spoke nor a huff or a puff of smoke. We don't own anything today. We have been robbed of a knowledge of self. We need a leader that will not lead us to heart attacks and Big Mac attacks and to Mac devils, but we need a leader that will lead us to something of our own. No more white castle. We need a black castle today. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. We need a leader that will guide us toward freedom and independence. My last few words. It is written in the scripture that the enemy has taken crafty counsel against God's anointed and chosen people. But it is also written that no weapon formed by the enemy can prosper against the righteous. That we fear neither the arrow that flies by day nor the arrow that flies by night. And so as the government with all of its wicked machinations 
have begun to rise up to cut us off from our salvation and cut us off from being a nation. We say, black man and woman, that you must make a choice today. Because they're now recognizing, as it is written in Revelations 12 and 12, Satan the devil has come down with great wrath, for he knows that he has but a short time to live. As Prince Akeem would say, Satan, this world is coming down like Babylon. And so I'm like Latifah, I've had it up to here. And I want to hear from someone today who will lead us on the path toward liberation and salvation. Because it's either this or that. It's either this or that. And I'm here to tell you today that this is where it's at. Because this is the move that you must make today, black man and black woman. And so, in a few moments, we will hear from the messenger of the messenger of Allah. We will hear from the apostle of the apostle of Allah. We will hear from the Messiah of the Messiah of Allah. We will hear from that one that God has anointed and appointed for this critical and crucial hour of our liberation and our salvation. So sit back in your seats, chill, buckle your seat belts. He'll be here in just a few moments and he won't come just telling us that we shall overcome but he will tell us that there's a God with us today and we shall overrun. He won't just come telling us, lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. But he will tell us, yes, lift every voice and sing. But at the same time with God backing us up as we lift every voice and sing, lift every fist and swing too. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Abdul Khalid Mohammed. What do you think your oppressors and enemy when they look at this bold, courageous leadership coming from the nation of Islam under the direction of the man that they fear most, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan? Can't you see the scriptures being fulfilled? I will not just send one savior after them. I will send saviors, plural, after my people. And now to carry us into our program, another hard-working minister of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, all the way from Baltimore, mosque number six, where recently the Honorable Louis Farrakhan spoke to over 9,000 of our people. Let us please receive Brother Minister Jamil Mohammed. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And in their names, I greet you, my beloved brothers and sisters, here in Mosque Maryam with the greetings of peace in the paradise of Islam alaikum. I cannot continue without thanking Allah who came in the divine person of Master Farad Muhammad to whom praise is forever due thanking him and thanking his Christ, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I must thank them for allowing me to live in the day when the fullness of time is upon us and when the working example of God in the midst of men filled up with the Spirit of God and working among us today is the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. I'm thankful as I know you are thankful to be living in the day when Farrakhan is doing the work that he is doing. So give yourself a hand for being here at Mas Mariam this afternoon. I must bear witness to the power of this day. 
the strength of the hour in which we live because as those brothers came before you, Brother Rodney and Brother Ishmael and Brother Collett, as they came before you, I was startled and taken aback by those men that I've known now for decades of time. These men are being filled up with a new spirit that is replacing the good spirit that was there before. There's a better spirit and a more empowerment coming up through them. And to look back up on them is to say all praise is due to the great God for his coming. If you don't believe that God is a man, believe that these men who follow and believe that God is a man. Don't you see God in them? Don't you see the power of God in them? The knowledge, the intelligence, the wisdom, the spirit, the resurrection of God in them? So I thank Allah for these brothers and sisters that are assembled here under this roof. But I bring a word of warning this afternoon. I bring to you a word of warning that is from the sincerest depths of my thoughts because as I watch us now rise into prominence and begin now as the deck is cleared of all the pretenders to the throne. As I see the Honorable Louis Farrakhan ascending to the place where God has promised him that he would be at the very pinnacle, then you and I must remember the time and do what must be done so that we do not become history repeaters, but rather we are history beaters. We must not be prophecy repeaters, but we must be prophecy beaters. In the days of Jesus in the New Testament, in the book of Mark, I believe, there is the story accounted of how these wicked conspirators against the life and work of Jesus wanted to rob Jesus of witnesses in the hour of their frame up. Y'all better listen to what I'm saying this afternoon. They wanted to rob the Jesus of the witnesses of the miracles he had wrought. And so they wanted to kill Lazarus nearly as bad as they wanted to kill Jesus, the man himself. You represent Lazarus. I know that I represent Lazarus. My family of birth is sitting right here in the audience. You know I was Lazarus in the grave, dead, wrapped up in grave clothes. But the voice of Farrakhan said, Lazarus, come forth. And as he called to come forth, you and I must come forth today, but we must not submit to no kind of scheme or game to make us lie on the great fact that he has done for us what he has done. See, I'm not coming to you off a high plane today. I'm just talking person to person. We must bear witness that the man that we are about to hear from, from that holy rostrum in just a few moments, that is the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, the voice of God in a man on the earth in 1992. Farrakhan is who we must bear witness to. We must bear witness to him. All praise is due to Allah for the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. And so, as I heard from Minister Khalid Abdul Muhammad, as he encouraged us to not only lift every voice and sing, but every fist and swing. As I heard him say that, I was reminded that while one fist is swinging, the other hand can be doing something too. And the something that the other hand needs to be doing is what I'm going to ask you to do now. I'm going to ask you to reach into your pocket. You knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. But today we must marry wealth and wisdom. Why should the wisdom of Farrakhan be bereft and devoid of the wealth that is necessary for its implementation? We must now get behind the leadership of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan like we have never been behind it before and show the enemies who are gathered right under the roof of Mas Maryam with us today, right there in the auditorium. There's some enemies here. We're not under any illusion, but we want the enemy to come in and have a true report to send back that we are united with the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Nothing will divide our unity from him and from each other. So, so, so brothers and sisters, the work goes on. The witness continues. The effort strengthens. And now I, like you, We'll take the advice of Minister Collett, sit down and buckle up my seatbelt and await the arrival of the man of the hour, the leader of the nation of Islam, the messenger of Allah, Minister Louis Farrakhan. I want to ask you to join me in welcoming back to the rostrum the Honorable Louis Farrakhan's capable assistant here in Chicago at Mosque Maryam and a son of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad in spirit and in lineage, our brother and our friend, 
Brother Minister Ishmael Muhammad. Would you welcome him back to the podium? And now, brothers and sisters, we would like to bring one more person to the rostrum before our leader arrives. Someone that also does not need words of introduction. My dear mother and pillar of strength, Sister Tainetta Mohammed. Please welcome her to the rostrum. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah and to Him alone do we worship. And to Him alone do we beseech for help. Allah came to the black man and the woman in the wilderness of North America not as a spirit nor as a spook nor as the sound of voices that you hear or in a vision or in a dream but he came in the flesh and the blood manifest image of a man and that man is Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi, the one that the whole world has been looking for. He is the one who came to the black man and the black woman and the black people in the wilderness of North America. And he worked among us from 1930 until 1934 and he left us but he did not leave us alone he worked in those three and a half years to fill one with his spirit with his mind and with his divinity and I'm speaking of none other than the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, our Savior and Deliverer. So, all praise is due to Allah. And after the Honorable Elijah Muhammad worked with the black mud, the essence of the black man and woman here in America, for 44 years and then he left in 1975 and he like his master did not leave us alone he prepared one that he gave to us as a son as a counselor as a wonderful friend as a divine guide to guide us through this turbulent period crises of the end of the world and I am speaking of none other than the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan so my beloved brothers and sisters if almighty God Allah came and blessed us twice three times do you think that he will leave us in the lurch do you think that he will not make honorable minister Louis Farrakhan successful we do not see master Farad Muhammad today do we nor do we see the honorable Elijah Muhammad in their flesh and blood form but we see one in the flesh and blood who is being backed by both Master Farad Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad.
And I wish to say, as I am beholding such beauty in front of me, both black men and black women, that one of the greatest gifts and one of the greatest divine messages that was given to our people to awaken us and bring us back into the full knowledge of self is that we are part and parcel of the Godhead. That as you look into the face of every black man and as we look into the face of every black woman, we are looking into the face of God Almighty. So let us rejoice today, though it appears that the earth is bursting out of its seams with all kinds of devastations, contaminations, pollutions, viruses, droughts, earthquakes, all kinds of calamities. Even though we are being, I would say, almost submerged in all kinds of disasters, let us not fear, because God Almighty is in our presence today to deliver us and to take us out of hell and to bring us into his new world kingdom. And as Minister Louis Farrakhan comes before us this afternoon with a message to save our lives, let us remember as the Holy Quran tells us in Surah 9, verses 32 and 33, they desire to put out the light of Allah with their mouths. Who are the they? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan Khan is going to answer that question today. They desire to put this truth, this light that Almighty God Allah has given us to shine forth with the reality of God. But, it says, Allah will allow nothing save the perfection of His light, though the disbelievers are adverse. He, Allah, it is who sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth that he may cause it to prevail over all religions though the polytheists be averse. So fear not, black man and black woman, we are the gods of the universe. And almighty God Allah is with us to the end to win the battle and to claim the victory over our enemies. Thank you. May Allah bless you. As I greet you, I salam alaikum. Sister Tainera Mohammed. How's everyone? All in anticipation, anxiously awaiting. Well, it is my honor to bring before the rostrum my brother, Minister Rasul Mohammed from Mosque Number no. One in Detroit, Michigan, who will introduce the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Let us please receive Brother Minister Rasul Mohammed from Detroit, Michigan. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God in existence but Allah, who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is his exalted Christ, and Minister Louis Farrakhan, the embodiment of that force and power among us right now. I greet you in the nation's greetings in the Arabic language that means peace of I salam alaikum. You might ask why is it that we are all way so fired up? You don't realize how much of an excitement it is 
to actually know that you are not in the days of a prophet that you are not, but you are in the day of God himself so when you look at Louis Farrakhan it, you are better off and more privileged than if you had walked with Moses when you are looking and listening to the honorable Louis Farrakhan you're more privileged and more blessed than if you were walking with Jesus 2,000 years ago. You may ask why and what can make me say such a black bodacious statement as that? Well, that's because I know that God is here. And when God is here, everything yesterday don't really make too much difference at this point. God is present. I'm excited. I'm talking smooth because I'm learning to be diplomatic. But I'm excited. God is here. Do you understand? And if you understand that God is present, then what does that mean to you? If I'm saying that we're not in a time of a prophet, see, if we're in a time of a prophet, that means somebody will be prophesying of something still yet to come. That means you got some more time to still be nothing but a Negro. Huh? I'm saying that we're in the time of God. Huh? I found something very interesting in my studies very interesting of how there's this Muslim scholar who by the name of Abu Allah Maududi who writes in a book entitled Islamic Law and Constitution that it is a prerequisite he says in the faith of Islam for a Muslim to strive towards the establishment of a separate state or territory that is under the authority of the sovereign God alone. It would appear that when the nation of Islam calls for a separate state or territory, we can call our own if freedom, justice, and equality is not practiced among us as a people. It would appear that one billion Muslims would back that concept. It would appear that that would be so even once we have recognized the greatest example of a separate state and territory in this century was in the establishment in 1947 of Pakistan within the country of India. Huh? Because they found that they could not effectively practice the tenets of their faith as long as they had to be in respect or under the authority of a government that did not respect the reality which is the only reality which is God himself so if you find yourself today in the belly of the most wicked and corrupt government on the face of the earth then what kind of call do you think God's man would be calling the people to do today the mission of a man of God is not just to elevate the conscience and the spiritual conscience of mankind. The mission of a man of God is to reconstruct a society wherein God can live. Do you understand? Where God can live. I don't want to ever go back I don't want to ever go back to the worshiping of some piece of wood. I don't want to ever go back to rubbing on barks of trees. I don't want to ever go back to being a sucker for leadership. I want to be growing into a time where the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, every time you look at a black man, you're looking at God. What that means is that in every black man and woman, you're looking at a vessel wherein force and power is in action. 
Huh? Oh, we ain't dumb today. We quite smart. All praise is due to Allah for the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. God's man. Actually, there is not really a title in the English language that is big enough and descriptive enough of the powerful man we have as our leader and teacher. I don't want you to make the mistake as to underestimate because you can never overestimate God since you have not known God for so long. I remember the words of a statesman by the name of Henry Kissinger who said in terms of success in government is measured or determined by the ability of a government to bring forth a new reality. The white man's government is successful because it has brought forth a new reality. Not only on these shores, but beyond these shores. It has transfigured the world and its people. The power of God today, brothers and sisters, dear family of God, children of the living God, if we were to measure success to the leader, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, it must be judged and measured and determined by the visual effect of that bringing forth a new reality, but it must first start with you. Huh? I don't want to be a cheering squad today. I want to be evidence that God is here. I want to be evidence that God is successful here by the transformation and transfiguration of myself in the program of self-development by the Al Muhammad, the living exalted Christ of God. The first point is separate yourself from the slave master. Some of you thought that since you separate yourself from white folks, you separated yourself from the slave master. The slave master is every attribute that has made up a weak character that is still keeping you from committing yourself fully to become a part of the success of God's presence among us today. Separate yourself from the slave master. Separate yourself from those things that have kept you on the level that the world still calls you today a nigger. And rise above the emotions that your condition will bring about into the mind and thinking of God. And if you listen objectively today, objectively today, to the words of the Honorable Louis Farquhar, I promise you that many degrees of growth will your brain achieve today if you just allow the words to sink in and have effect on you. Every time I listen to my leader, I'm reborn. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said fasting should be practiced as long as you are in an unrighteous society and fasting is not just from food, it's the abstinence from all those things that keep you away from the reality of God. We have a man who is not only qualified but a vessel through which God himself is exercising judgment. That's a very powerful man. So obedience to him is nothing for us to be asked of. Huh? You have a leader. A leader you can trust. A leader who loves you. Backed by a God that loves you. And has been searching for you and has found you and has been working for you and backing you for 62 years and it's not over yet what do you think about that Muslims are you in here Look at all these ministers quiet over here I'm not talking 
it's not a, I don't think I was doing it to no Baptist sermon. We talking about the day of God. Everybody kind of silent here. Can you hear me pretty well? All right. Well, I know I'm not giving a Baptist sermon here. You know, so since we waiting on our leader, and he'll be here any minute now, and I know I'm not the only bear, witness bearer in this house. Huh? I'm looking to hear from those who back the leader. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He's here. He's here. The Honorable Louis. of Allah the Beneficent, the Merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the worlds, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi, the one who was to come and indeed has come. We thank him for raising up in our midst a divine leader, teacher, and guide, a man that the world has been looking for, for 2,000 years. Yes, sir. They sought him in the east, but he was born in the west. Yes, sir. The wise have seen his star yes, sir. and are now journeying to the west yes, sir. to see the baby. Yes, sir. A baby nation in the midst of a beast. Yes, sir. We thank Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. I greet all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum, which of course means peace be unto you. I'm sorry that I missed so much of the fire of these wonderful helpers of mine in the cause of Allah. I know I missed a lot, but I thank you. Thank you. Minister Khaled. Yes, sir. Brother Minister Rodney. Brother Minister Rasul. Brother Minister Ishmael. And Sister uh, Minister <laughs> Instructress Tainetta Muhammad. Yes, sir. And and Brother Jameel. Yes, sir. Thank you all for your wonderful words. And thank you for a wonderful weekend. Thank you, sir. Now, I want to get right to the point.
The United States of America is about to come under the divine chastisement of God. And the government of the United States of America is about to make an attack on the Muslims. The world knows Allah, God, by name. In fact, even before the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born, the name Allah was known among the people. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, with the revelation of the Holy Quran, brought to us the 99 names of Allah, the most perfect of them being Allah. There is no real translation for the name Allah, but if one were to translate it, it would mean the one true God. All of the righteous names of God belong to Him. All of the names that we call on, they are good names, but each of them describes an aspect of the God. But the best name to give Him is Allah, for it encompasses all of the good names. Jehovah is a good name. Yahweh is a good name. The omnipotent is a good name. The beneficent, the merciful, the powerful, the mighty, the wise, the truth, the forgiving, the destroyer. All of these are good names of God. But Allah, Allah, that is the name that encompasses all of the good names. But what we have not known, we have not known the person of God. We know his name, we know his attributes, but we don't, we've never seen him. He has remained unseen, but he is known through what is seen. We see the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, the worlds that Allah created, but we don't see Him. Everything that testifies to His greatness is physical, but the unseen power behind this physical manifestation, we have not seen Him. The prophets have heard his voice. He has spoken to them according to the scriptures. He spoke to them. They heard his voice in their ears. He revealed to his servants the prophets, the Torah, the gospel, the Quran. And according to the Holy Quran, every nation has received a messenger. Every nation has received a warner. Every people have received somebody from the God that has guided them, taught them, warned them, united them, purified them. Even to the Native Americans, yes, there have been great ones coming up among the Native Americans called Indians yes, that gave them vision and guidance yes, and tried to unite them. But the God who has made all of this reality has not been seen. So we don't know him. We know his name. We, we feel his spirit, but we don't know him. I... Um, like the voice of Mariah Carey, you know, I heard her voice on the um, record. I said, what a beautiful voice. What range she has. 
But though I heard her voice, I never knew the face. But I felt her spirit. But it's nothing like seeing the person in person. So when, when a star appears, you know, and you hear about Michael Jackson, or you hear about a great one, but when they come to your town, and you see the words live and in person, then you go and get your ticket and stand in line to see that star. Well, what if somebody, what if somebody told you God was live and in person? What if somebody told you that Stand in line, you can see God. You can touch Him. You can get acquainted with Him. He's real, He's live. We've known His name, we've felt His spirit, we've basked in His wisdom, we've been birthed into His creation, but we've never met Him, but now we can see Him live and in person. Wouldn't that be something? Anybody could stand up and say, here I am. There's all kind of Michael Jackson imposters. But there's something about the imposter when the real thing comes. The imposter just has to sit down. You have many look-alike Michaels. But there ain't but one Michael. Pardon my language, there is not but one. <laughs> they have many look-alike Michael Jordan, but there is not but one. You may have many playing God, but there is only one. He's unique. He's incomparable. He's matchless. There's none like him. Now, listen. Isn't it interesting that the Arabic language is one of the most mathematically precise languages in creation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One little um, dot over a word changes the meaning. And every word has so many different shades of meaning. It is a mathematically precise language. But when it comes to describing God, it seems to be lost for some reason because it keeps using pronouns like I, like me, like him, and he. Well, wait a minute. If God is not like you and me, why call him he? Give a more descriptive, mathematically precise uh, way of talking about God. Don't say him, we might make a mistake. Don't say he, we might make a mistake. Don't say I, we might make a mistake. But the book says God sees, but he doesn't have eyes. God hears, but he doesn't have ears. God talks, but he doesn't have vocal cords. God's arm, the book says, is not too short that it cannot say, but it's really not talking about an arm. But the arm is just used to describe the power of this physical member of our body, that it is an arm, and it supports me. So God's arm is his power. But how does he manifest his power? He manifests it through physical creation. Is that right? Well, God must be known today. There would come a time when we wouldn't have to guess about God anymore. There would come a time that God would make himself known and you could see him live and in person and in living color. Now, you know, people do 
do a lot of things to make themselves known. When I was in show business, all of us lived to be known. Most people in show business don't want money, they just want to be known. So others get the money and they get known. That's why most of our show people die broke and their managers die rich. Because our people just wanted to be known, just wanted to be seen, just wanted to be heard. Now, in order to get known in this world, you got to do something different. And what you do different has to be appealing to the mass. Mariah Carey has a different sound. She has a beautiful voice, but she does the things that Minnie Ripperton used to do. But she does it even a little better. So when you make manifest her gift, people hear it and say, I never heard anything like, quite like that before. Wow, this is great. Get known. Never seen anybody, you know, play ball like Michael. I mean, his predecessor, Dr. J, was wonderful. And after Dr. J retired, we never thought we'd see someone like that again, but we just keep producing, you know, greatness out of our ranks. So Michael can go up under the basket, jump up, scoop, and then, you know, change hands in midair and talk. And does all those wonderful things. So everybody's talking about Michael because he does something different. That's how you get known. Some of us want to get known so bad, we get strange. We'll wear shoes that are 16 feet tall. Walk around on stilts. Y'all see me? You can't see me, I see you. Look up, I'm, I'm up over you, I'm 16 feet. People do crazy things just to be seen. They want to be known. I've seen people carry tables in their jaw. Sit fat women on the table and then sit down and pick the table up. I said, now that's, that's something unusual. That'll get you known, all right. I've seen, I've seen the fat woman in the carnival. Used to call her Baby Emma, over 500 pounds. And she would come out with a garment, look like an elephant was on one thigh and a rhinoceros was on the other. And she would do a little move and breathe heavy and flop down. Ah, I'm a little tired. But she got known, you know. I used to go see the tattooed lady. There was a man that was eight foot tall. We had never seen anything like that. But you got to be different in order to be known. Well, God said in the Bible, he wanted to make himself known. Well, God, do you, why do you want people to know you? Since you've been hiding from us so long, why do you want people to know you? He said, because it is time now that all false gods be set down. That everything that the people worship that is not God has to fail them. All my servants that they call on beside me, everything that they bow down to and worship beside me, I have to destroy their confidence in all gods. Let's I got to make myself known that worship in this day will be only and solely for me. Well, it is time now that all false gods be set down. 
that everything that the people worship that is not God has to fail them. All my servants that they call on beside me, everything that they bow down to and worship beside me, I have to destroy their confidence in all gods. I got to make myself known that worship in this day will be only and solely for me. If God wants to make himself known, then he has to create a problem that no man can solve. He has to create a force that no man can deal with. And then he allows the problem to intensify so that the world's attention is on the problem. And he allows the force to become so great that the world's attention will be on the force that is so powerful, so awe-inspiring, so unable uh, to be dealt with. Yeah. Then God will enter yeah. live and in person yeah. and say, now the problem cannot be solved. Come scholars, come scientists, yeah. come all of you with knowledge, yeah. deal with this. And when they wring their hands and say, it's too great, we can't handle it. He raises a force that is so powerful. He says, come powerful men, come angels, come anybody, deal with this force. And they all bow down and say, I can't deal with it. It's too much for me. Then he comes out of the wings. But before he comes out of the wings, he does the impossible. He takes weakness and casts it against strength. He hides himself and then takes a weak thing to face a strong thing and the strong thing can't uproot the weak thing because he's upholding the weak thing. when he gets the world's attention just where he wants it then he makes his grand move and he destroys the indestructible and he corrects the insolvable problem and then stands alone that the world may know that God is God that he's alive he's in the world and that all worship this day will be for him. Now let's move on. You have a Bible. Let's listen. You have a Bible full of prophecies about the day in which we live. You have a Holy Quran full of prophecies about the day in which we live. We have the sayings of the prophets about the day in which we live. Things are happening that are so awe-inspiring. So in the Quran, in the 22nd chapter called Al-Hajj, the pilgrimage, it reads, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. O people, keep your duty to your Lord. Surely the shock of the hour is a grievous thing. The day you see it, wait just a minute. It is a reflexive pronoun. It is reflecting back on something. But what is the something? Surely the shock of the hour is a grievous thing. The day you see it. Every woman giving suck 
will forget her suckling. Well, that's poetic language, meaning every woman nursing a baby is going to forget the baby that she's nursing. Now, that's got to be a heck of a thing that you're going to see. A, a mother who is nursing a baby, it appears, can never forget her baby. The baby goes with her everywhere she goes because she's nursing that baby. But this shock of the hour will be so great, every woman having a baby that she's nursing will forget about her baby. Yes, and every pregnant one will lay down her burden. That must be something. Yes, that you are having a baby. Second month, third month, fourth month, fifth month, sixth month. But when you see what you are about to see, it will be so grievous that every woman who is pregnant, every animal that is pregnant, every bird that is pregnant, everything that is pregnant will lay down the burden. That's something. The Quran goes on, and you will see men as drunken, yet they will not be drunk. But the chastisement of Allah will be severe. Now the word in Arabic that is used here to describe the shock of the hour is a word in Arabic called zalzala, which means originally he put him in a state of commotion or agitation or he cast terror into his heart by means of war, trial, difficulty and affliction. The shock of the hour. See brothers and sisters you're not going to straighten up on any word from me. Just the better ones of you. Uh -uh. You're not going to hear no warning. No. Bush is not going to straighten up. Deng Xiaoping is not going to straighten up. The world leaders are bent on their course. They don't straighten up with no preaching. The shock of the hour has to be so powerful that it casts terror into the heart. Make you drop to your knees like the oxen that is being laid under burden. Force you to pray to whatever God you think you know, make you call him. <laughs> and among men is he who disputes about Allah without knowledge. See, that's the whole problem. The whole problem is we're disputing over who God is, what God is. So God has to make you know who he is by making such a shock in the hour that you know whoever produced the shock has to be the God. Stop you in your rebellion. Stop you in your wild career. Stop you in your foolishness. Stop you in your filth and indecency and debauchery. Stop you in your drug addiction and your AIDS addiction stop you in your wildness the shock gets so great you can't function it's like that earthquake that hit California the other day people getting ready for a festival but when the earth starts
God shaking. You can't think about festival. The musician can't crank up his music. The dancers can't dance. The marchers can't march. The whores can't haul. The pimps can't pimp. The hustlers can't hustle. The dope dealers can't deal no dope. comes in contact with their weakness. They come in contact with their inability to deal effectively with the hour. That's what an earthquake will do. It humbles you right away. Immediately you say, oh God. And by whatever name you call him, you, you learn it real quick. But whoever you're calling on, you're calling on that power that is behind that that you know you didn't start nor can you end. And among men is he who disputes about Allah without knowledge and follows every rebellious devil. For him it is written down that whoever takes him for a friend he will lead him astray and conduct him to the chastisement of the burning fire. Oh, people, coming back to you again, and me, and us, if you are in doubt about the resurrection, then surely we created you from dust, then from a small life germ, then from a clot, then from a lump of flesh, complete in make and incomplete, that we may make clear to you. And we cause what we please to remain in the womb till an appointed time. God is talking. You ain't got nothing to do with this mother. You want the baby, but Allah says, we cause to remain in your wombs what we please till an appointed time. And if it doesn't please us, we abort your pregnancy. And you can't do nothing about it. He says, we bring you forth as babies, then that you may attain your maturity. And of you is he who is caused to die. And of you is he who is brought back to the worst part of life so that after knowledge he knows nothing. Some of you attain maturity as you are mature people in front of me. Then you die in your maturity. But some of you will get old. And after knowing, you will act as though you know nothing. You become senile. Then he makes a strange comparison. He says, you see the earth barren. And we send down water thereon. It stirs and swells and brings forth a bountiful growth of every kind. That is because Allah he is the truth. What do you mean, Allah? He is the truth. Why can't you just say Allah is the truth? Why did you have to make an appositive here? You say Allah, then you have a comma, and you want to drive your point home. He is the truth. He gives life to the dead. And check this out. He is possessor of power over all things. And the hour is coming. There is no doubt about it. 
and Allah will raise up those who are in the grave. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking all these cemeteries are going to just open up and people going to get, no, brother, no, no, sister, no, no. Well, I thought I was going to see my mama again. No, no, sweetheart. No, 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 no. No. The grave here is something different. The shock of the hour is for people who are living. The dead can't feel the shock. The pregnant woman that's going to lay down her burden, there's no pregnant woman in the grave that's going to throw the baby up out of six feet. There's nobody dead going to be moving like they're drunk because they're still and frozen in death. So it's not talking about the dead in those kind of graves. The hour is coming. There is no doubt about it. And Allah will raise up those who are in the graves. And among men is he who disputes about Allah without knowledge. He comes right back to that theme. And without guidance. And without an illuminating book turning away haughtily to lead men astray from the way of Allah for him is disgrace in this world and on the day of resurrection we shall make him taste the punishment of burning this is for that which thy two hands have sent before and Allah is not in the least unjust to his servants Now, what is an hour? An hour is a segment of time. The hour contains 60 minutes. And the minute contains 60 seconds. So when you break the hour down, you have 60, 60, and 6. The hour is coming. Whose hour? If you open the book of Revelations, it tells you here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For the number of the beast is the number of a man, six hundred, three score, and six. The hour is coming. The hour here represents war, chastisement, affliction, trial. The earth now is breaking out in little wars all over the earth. The people in Croatia, the people in Serbia, huh? the people in white Russia, the people in Uzbekistan, the people in Tajikistan, the people in Kazakhstan, the Armenians and the Christians and the Muslims, at odds, the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims at odds, the Catholics and the Protestants in Ireland at odds, terrorizing. People walking in cars blow up, hotels blow up, airplanes blow up, terrorism. Terror coming into the heart, but that's only small time stuff. These are what you call preludes. To the big act that is about to go down. Listen. There are over 
43 wars going on on the earth right now. Central America, South America, Asia, the Middle East, Africa, wars. There's famine. There's pestilence. People dying. Whole villages, tribes dying with AIDS. Drought in Africa. The desert is getting wider and greater. The Sahara is now expanding. Not sometimes due to natural disaster, but due to man-made disaster. Huh? America and Russia were locked in struggle. Y'all all right? America and Russia locked in struggle and America says she's going to force Russia's economy to break up by constantly putting more and more money into arms. So much of the American budget has gone to the arms matches. Making new aircraft carriers yes, cost a billion dollars. New airplanes, even testing them, costing hundreds of millions of dollars. Yes, new tanks, new rockets, using the latest technology, computer technology, yes, electronics technology, going out in space with their rockets blowing up and their satellites malfunctioning causing more and more expenditure of wealth the Russians trying to keep up more Navy more submarines more nuclear weapons spreading the nuclear weapons out over the vast Union of Soviet Socialist Republics and all of a sudden Gorbachev comes up and Gorbachev wants to modernize and revolutionize Russia. He's a bold man. He's a man of vision. But before Gorbachev, the Cold War had the third world in a position where the non-aligned nations could play east against west for their own development and betterment. So Russia had some client states and America had some client states. China and Russia were once friends. Then their friendship broke. But nobody, if you excuse the expression, mess with China. A billion, two hundred million Chinese. They got so many Chinese, it's against the law in China to have more than one baby per family. If you have more than one baby, you got to pay a fine. Now, whenever you get that kind of percentage, you have to ask yourself, what is the square mileage of China? And how many can China safely support from the earth under their feet? When you got a billion, 200 million people, how much acreage must you have under cultivation to feed a billion, 200 million people? China is already overpopulated and must expand. Japan, let's talk about a myth. The shock of the hour is coming. And you're smack 
dab in the middle of it. Nobody in this audience will get away. Nobody in Chicago, in New York, in LA, in Georgia, in Mississippi, you're not getting away. White or black, Hispanic, I don't care what your color is, you're not getting away from this. This is the hour all your madness is going to cease. You ain't got long. Japan, over 120 million people on the little island of Nippon. They don't have enough land to take care of their 120 and more million people and growing. Japan has to find areas in the world that she can help to cultivate, to feed her people. Her shipping trawlers are in the waters of every sea, gathering fish to bring back to Japan. So much so that Japan's fishing trawlers are in constant conflict with nations that are saying that Japan is encroaching upon their waters. Korea, the Asian people are having an awful lot of babies. Taiwan used to be called Formosa. It just about populated that island. People looking for expansion. We need more territory. When you need more territory than the weak take over, are taken over by the strong. This is why Jesus prophesied wars and rumors of war and nation rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And this is just the beginning of sorrows. Then there will be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Then brother is going to deliver up Brother, there'll be all kinds of schemes and betrayals and in the family among the very people who are supposed to be working for the same cause. The enemy will be able to come in and buy one out and make him turn against the other. Buy a husband or a wife out and make him turn against the husband or the wife buy a brother out and make him turn against his family. This is the time that you're living in. Then the affection of the people will become strange and the natural affection will be turned into something unnatural. And women will be lying down with women and men lying down with men working that which is unseemly. This is the time we're living in. It's not getting better, it's getting worse. It's leading to a conclusion. It's leading to the shock of the hour. Let's look now. America spends so much money on arms. Russia trying to keep pace. Gorbachev with perestroika, glasnost, trying to open up Russia. But that's a big revolutionary idea undertaken at a time when the world cannot afford that change in Russia. The Russians couldn't handle it. And those client states dependent on Russia couldn't handle it. The Russian economy now ruined. Can't help Cuba. Can't help Nicaragua. Can't help its client states in Africa. Can't help its client states in the Middle East. 
Assad of Syria had a friendship pact with Russia so that when Pan Am flight 101 I think it was 103 surely man is in loss the 103rd surah of the Quran anyway at first they said it was the Syrians but the Syrians were a client state of Russia so they couldn't attack Syria without bringing Russia into war with them so Reagan put it on Libya because even though Libya is revolutionary Libya is not tied to Russia it had friendship but not a friendship pact so Reagan bombed Libya charging him with the discotheque thing but they never charged Libya with the Pan Am bombing until just recently. We'll get to that in a minute. All of a sudden, in the twinkling of an eye, we watched Europe, Eastern Europe, just blow up. Powerful leaders that looked like they had control. And in the communist countries, they got control of a state-run uh, television, state-run press. So all means of communication and ideas are controlled by the state. But another power was moving among the masses. And the masses rose up. So week after week you see a new government falling. Another one falling, another one falling. Finally, the whole Russian thing began to break up. And in shock, America said, woke up one day, and there was no more Russia. You remember when the Shah of Iran was here, visiting with Jimmy Carter? And tear gas was coming up on the lawn and in a matter of less than a year the shower was gone the revolution started with a tape and cassette recorder just spreading the word by tape and all of a sudden the leaders didn't have power no more to deal with the masses because the masses were listening to another voice. And before you knew it, the masses shook and governments came down. Now Russia's gone. The Soviet Union, as we know it, gone in the what? Twinkling of an eye. You don't think that could happen to America, do you? You've been sold a bill of goods and you bought it. That America's invincible. You don't believe that there's no power able to deal with her. You're almost right. Not quite right, but almost right. When Russia fell and broke up, Secretary of State Baker started moving throughout the world, talking to every nuclear power, trying to bring them in line with certain protocols. Russia, white Russia, and Boris Yeltsin, the new president, went along with Bush and Baker. 
but he couldn't solidify his own military machinery. So among the Muslims for the first time in Kazakhstan are hundreds of strategic at nuclear weapons. And while all the other republics decided to give up their nuclear weapons, the Muslims said, no, we're not giving up ours. Now, for the last 15 years, you've been picking up your newspaper every day and reading about Muslim this, Muslim that, Hezbollah this, Party of God that, Mujahideen this, huh? But Islam has been put on your mind. You don't know yourself or Muslims yet. You think Muslims are terrorists. Well... Well... The only time a righteous person will terrorize you is if you've done something to anger the righteous and the righteous intend to take care of business with you, then they'll terrorize you. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. I'm almost finished. This kind of, wait, 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 I'm going to say this. You know, this kind of teaching is frightening, you know. You, you meet a man, he seems so sweet. I am. But when it comes to this, see, I don't even know the man myself. My wife don't know me. This ain't the man that she sleep with. That's why when I get up in this, my wife look at me, you see awe in her face. And because this is not the man she married to. Something else is going on. Uh, that's a fact. This man you had to get acquainted with. The hour. Russia is gone. The Muslims have strategic atomic weapons. Iran, which had a chance to build up during America's attack on Iraq, now is moving closer to those Muslim republics in Russia that have the strategic nuclear weapons. China's quiet. Baker went over to China to pull China in. China said, ain't nothing happening. <laughs> and Baker left with his tail between his legs and came back. And you haven't heard too much. Let's leave the Chinese alone. But they're about to get very active. Surely the shock of the hour. It's a grievous thing. White folks in trouble. I just be just till it comes straight to the point. The white man is in serious trouble. And let me tell you something. Every one of you that line up with the white man, you in trouble, man. You in trouble. that put your eggs in his basket, you're in trouble. Because your master is in trouble. He's in serious trouble. Now let's get right 
to the crystallization of all of this. With Russia's economy broken, the poor third world nations that relied on that conflict between East and West, their nakedness is exposed now. So everybody is like, um, you remember in Godfather 1? When the old Don died and Michael took over and everybody wasn't quite aware of Michael's sagacity, tenacity, and desire to kill his enemies. And when the heads of all the five families were wiped out, that's when you saw everybody coming, kissing his ring. The new dawn had been born. Well, when Russia went down, the Soviet Union went down, you find everybody coming to kiss Bush's ring. 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 And Bush, Bush now is the most powerful leader in the world. And America, without a doubt, is the only game in town. White folk in America riding high. Ain't no more Russia. We got this thing. Now, all our enemies, we're going to deal with them. Even though Noriega sold dope at my command. Even though Noriega let dope in the country at my command. He messed up. Take out the stealth bombers, go down and get him. They brought him back to America in chains, tried him in Miami, found him guilty, and Bush said justice has been done. Daniel Ortega, the Sandinista leader of Nicaragua, he wanted to get close to Reagan and Bush And they sold him on the idea of democracy. You have a vote in your country. And if you win the election and you win it fair and square, we will accept you. So he said, okay, okay. Democracy. So he had an election and the Americans went down to the CIA with millions of dollars. And he's out. And Violetto Chamorro is in. And white folks say, well, good. We're going to rule through her. But great dissatisfaction is in Nicaragua. When he took Noriega out, Noriega was a dark man. If he came and walked on 63rd and Cottage, Or he walked on the west side, the Mexican brothers would say, ah, one of us. If he walked among the mulatos, they say, ah, he one of us. If he walked on 63rd and Cottage, they say, yo, baby, he's one of us. Even though he played ball with white America, he didn't play ball all the way. See, when you get in white folks' game and you start ratting on your people, you can't all of a sudden get religion. 
Because when you get religion, he'll get you. So Noriega out of the way, Daniel Ortega out of the way, and they're moving on Castro. Now, Bush is so powerful, he got Prime Minister Major in Britain, and um, the um, President of France, Mitterrand. Let's get Libya. So all of a sudden now, they fabricate some evidence and I put evidence in quotes, that Libya is responsible for the Pan Am bombing. Right. So they say to Gaddafi, give us these two men to be tried. Like they gave him Noriega to be tried. You're going to get a fair trial. Black folk, we know about fair trials, don't we, brothers? <laughs> we know about these fair trials. Ask Mike Tyson about a fair trial in Indiana. You get the wrong person representing you, buddy. You out of here. Anyway, as you look at this now, Bush has put through the UN sanctions on Libya. He really got control now over the Security Council. Yes, sir. He's making the Security Council bow to the political will of the United States. He's moved in Africa. In Ghana, Flight Lieutenant Rollins have one party there. He's in power, he sees power, 10 or 12 years ago, he's still in power, but in order for him to quote unquote make it and get any kind of funding, they said to Rollins, you got to step down and have an election. So Rollins said, well, I'll do it. I think I can win an election. I'll step down. Arab Moi of Kenya who has always been the friend of Israel and America said, I don't want more than one party. There ain't gonna be no democracy. And all America did was unleash propaganda against him in his own country, turning his people against him. And when he saw a revolution coming, he said, okay, okay, America, I'll have democracy. Babangida in Nigeria is about to step down and have elections. Nigeria, the most populous African nation and potentially the strongest African nation, potentially one of the wealthiest African nations. So full of corruption. America is holding out the promise that through the World Bank and the IMF if you play ball and become democratic which means I go in with the taxpayers dollars and I buy my man in power in every nation in Africa and everyone that won't bow We'll overturn them, we'll kill them. Saddam Hussein, they want him dead. They want Gaddafi dead. Rafsanjani in Iran, they're trying to, he's trying to mellow. Only one they don't talk about too much is China. Now let's see what's really happening. The Jews in America have always had power. They don't care who's elected. They run the show. 
the Federal Reserve Bank. If it lowers the interest rate, it affects the stock market. We always thought that the Federal Reserve Bank was owned by the government and the people of the United States of America. We did not know that the Federal Reserve Bank is a privately owned corporation that prints the money that we spend. Oh yes, let's talk about it. Showdown time. Owned by Jews. They print your money. They can tighten the economy or... <laughs> What's the matter? You, you don't like that? You hear Jews when they argue with us. You, you say, we own the banks. We, we, don't, we, don't, we don't own any banks. The banks are owned by, by the wasps. The white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Yeah, they may own them little banks. <laughs> but you got the bank of all banks. It was Rothschild who said, whoever makes the laws, I don't care, as long as we control the money. Well, here we are. If you look at your dollar bill, they say money talks. But we never did understand what it says. But it's talking. If you have a dollar bill in your pocket, you may just take it out. I won't take it from you. I just take it. If you look, it has Georgie on the cover. On the one dollar bill. Because he's number one. He's the first president. He's a Shriner. He has 32 or 3 degrees of masonry. You look on the back of the dollar, you see a pyramid with a missing block at the top. Called a capstone, I think. And you have an all-seeing eye in a pyramid of its own looking for the capstone. I'm sure he spied it. Over on the other side, you have an eagle, which is a bird of prey. It has arrows in one uh, claw, uh, claw and an olive branch in the other. Talking peace and ready for war. They have nine feathers in his tail. I think it's 13 arrows. Check it out. That unlucky number for white folk. These nine feathers in his tail. See, that's what gives you your... Your tail is what gives you your... <laughs> your balance. Those nine feathers represent the nine Supreme Court justices. And it's a very increasingly conservative Supreme Court that's against you, brother and sister. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white stripes and six red here. Come to 13 again. Then above it in a sort of like a halo like thing, you have 13 stars. And if you could draw a line starting from the top 
star down and then across and then up and then the four stars right under the one if you could draw a line across and then down you'd see a star of David see the real Israel has never been over there the real Israel is right here called the United States of America run by Jews take it or leave it y'all all right don't leave me now are y'all all right now look at the look at how this thing winds up it was natural for this Israel to help set up that Israel you think the Jews are a minority here but minority is only numerical one could be a minority among nine or ten but if one got the power then the nine others that are outnumber the one make no difference it's where the power is you understand that don't you now let's go on we're having a nice time now if you notice who goes up on the hill to talk about the economy? Mr. Greenspan. And before Mr. Greenspan, it was? Who? Paul Vokla. Spell it. But he's one of the clan, ain't he? That's my point. They run the money picture. You need to get a book that details how the Federal Reserve Bank came into existence. The boys that print your money, that's the real power. And they got us killing each other over this. Selling out our future over this. Jews set up the communist camp. Karl Marx was a Jew. Jews set up democracy or capitalism. You really want democracy? Let me break it down and show you what it means. You want democracy? You got democracy. What is democracy? Let's break the word down. Democracy. You got it? D E M O C A R C R A C Y. Pardon me. I only went to the third grade. Democracy. That is an English word that has its root in Greek. So in order to understand the real meaning of democracy, you got to go to Greek. So the word demo comes from the Greek word demos. And krasi comes from the Greek root kratis. K-R-A-T-I-S. Demos Kratis. When you bring it up into Latin, it becomes demon, D-E-M-O-N, C-R-A-C-I, Krasi. Then they drop the N and change the I to a Y and you get Democracy. Well, Demos Kratis and demon classy means the rule not of the people but the rule of the devil <laughs> democracy so when they say 
We want democracy in Africa. We want the rule of the devil, not the rule of the people. They have never wanted the rule of the people. They want the rule of a few to subjugate the masses so that the few can live in luxury as blood suckers of the poor. Democracy. It's the only game in town now. Democracy. Destroyed nations, but no nation has bombed her. Not one of America's cities has suffered what America has put on cities of nations around this world. You that visit America, you can fly from the East Coast to the West Coast. You see an unbroken string of marvelous cities and towns that have never known the ravages of war. Not from the outside. It only knew war in the Civil War, in the War of 1812. And those, those were wars, but not since America has been developed in the modern context. The shock of the hour. Now, remember how I started the lecture? Talking about God in person? That's how we're going to end it. You see, if this is Israel, the real Israel, the hidden Israel, then if you look in the book of Revelations, you see a mystery Babylon that was like a golden chalice on the outside, but filth and abomination of every kind on the inside. Here's America. The melting pot where you can walk the streets and hear so many different languages it's like the Tower of Babel and the people in America are confused and one against the other and that confusion is waxing stronger every day But she's still the only game in town. But in her midst is a whole people that didn't come on the Mayflower. That didn't come seeking freedom, but came in the holes of ships as slaves. The same Jewish people that say they are our friends were the principal architects of the slave trade. They were the principal beneficiaries of the slave trade. We have this documented, sisters and brothers, from their own scholarly writings, not from the mouth of Louis Farrakhan. They were the principal architects in distributing the slaves. They were the auctioneers that sold the slaves. They were the plantation owners that bought the slaves. They were the masters that worked the slaves. They were the ones that helped to rob us of our minds of our names, our language, our culture, our religion, our God. So that today you know nothing of yourself because of your friends. It was Jews who fought against Nat Turner, Denmark Vesey, Gabriel Prosser, Toussaint Louverture, Dessalines, Christophe. It was Jews who worked against Frederick Douglass. 
Jews who wept against Marcus Garvey, Jews that wept against Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Jews in the government, in the Justice Department, Jews that wept against the prophets of God. Take it or leave it. to be no prophet I'm just your brother but I come in the line like those ancient worthies I'm in the most powerful government that ever was in the last 6,000 years I want you to listen well now I have greater enemies against me and this movement than Moses had against him than Jesus had against him than Prophet Muhammad had against him my enemies are greater than all their enemies combined If, if I survive like a lamb in the midst of ravenous beasts, if I survive, then the power that backs me is greater than the powers that are against me. God is in person today. Allahu Akbar. Remember what I said at the beginning? I talked about a problem no man could solve. And I talked about a power that nobody could deal with. Where's the problem that no scientist can solve? Here we are, 30 to 40 million black people who have been turned upside down and inside out. 30 to 40 million black people who don't know who they are, don't know where they are, don't know what time it is, don't know who their God is, don't know what their religion is but are trusting in the God of their slave master. A pale faced blue eyed, blonde haired, hook nosed cracker that the white man gave you as Jesus. like the pictures they gave you. You are nothing more than devil worshippers. That's why you don't have any power in your religion against your enemy because you are worshipping in the religion that your enemy gave you. Your enemy gave you Christianity. Your enemy gave you this religion. A slave making religion. Have no power in it to free you. Your enemy set up the church didn't set it up. Paul didn't set it up. The white man set it up. Didn't he? He set up the black church because he didn't want you in the white church. He gave you the black preacher. He taught him theology and told him what to preach. 
That's why you have never been able to be freed by no preacher. Because the preacher has always been the tool of the white man against you. Reverend, Reverend, my dear Reverend, my dear Reverend, if you continue to preach that damnable philosophy, your congregation one day will rise up and kill you in the pulpit. Because your people are rising today. And you can't preach no ethereal nothing they're going to get in the sky while they help to build a kingdom for the white man on earth. If you don't represent the kingdom of God on earth, you better find yourself some good preaching to give your people. Because they're waking up fast nowadays. I'm not saying that many black preachers are not sincere. But being sincere, wrong is to be dead right. You get no high mark for being sincere. You get a high mark for being right. And ain't no white man gonna give you no theology and make you right for your people. Do you hear me? You can take it or let it alone. Bring me your degreed Negroes. Me what they have done for black people. The white man doesn't give you a degree to serve your people. He gives you a degree to serve him. And this is what you and your people have done for 400 years. Serve your enemy. Fight for your enemy die for your enemy give your woman and your children to your enemy you come here today with your white wives and your white husbands and your white boyfriends you've got a hell of a nerve after all the hell that your people have caught for 400 years, you bring the daughter of your slave master's children home and think we should accept her? Have you no sense at all? What self-respecting Jew would bring a German home and introduce a German lover to the children of the Holocaust? The black holocaust is worse than anything in the annals of history. How dare you bring that skunk home and offer her to us? We want you back, black woman. We want you back, black woman. You are our woman and we are your man. God gave you to us and God gave us to you. We are a sorry lot, but today, God is in person. God is going to make a difference today. We have not been good men to our women. We have not been good providers for our women. We have not been good maintainers of our women. We have abused our women and our girls. We have low-rated them. We have disgraced them. But God is in person today. 
And just like it was in the beginning, God said, let us make a man. He didn't say, let us make a Negro, let us make a nigger, let us make a colored boy. Let us make a man. And when God makes a man, and when God crawls up inside of what he made, that when that man speaks, God speaks. When that man walks, God walks. When that man acts, God acts. That's the man that you can fall in love with because you are the woman of God and you never have been the woman of man. Now the problem. The problem. 40 million black people yearning to breathe free. 40 million black people who have outlived their usefulness to white America. 40 million black people with a population ever growing. A youth population stronger as the white population gets weaker and older. A young population ready for war and ready for jobs but there's no more jobs and it looks like war is no longer on the horizon so the army is letting go the blacks a problem in america you live in the ghettos where there are no jobs for you you live in the ghetto where there is no justice for you you live in the ghetto where there's disease and death for you you live in the ghetto where there's no friend for you. So you have become your own worst enemy. A problem that America says she can't solve. She calls you the permanent underclass. She has no solution to your problem. She now has decided to erase the problem using chemical and biological warfare. You call it McDonald's. You call it Wendy's. You call it Burger King. You call it Taco Bell. You call it White House. What is the name of that? White Castle. Y'all know what I'm talking about. These fast food merchants of death. Our young men and our young women weak, filled with death and disease. A population where over 50% of our women are obese. You are filled with waste material. As I call you the human garbage pail. You begin to look like a garbage pail. You lose that beautiful form. The indentation of your waist and the beautiful curvature of your hips that have made the poets and the writers write about you from ancient antiquity. Write about your majestic beauty, but today you've become an old round garbage pail filled up with the swill of greasy food. Wrong foods. Eating all times of the day and the night. Eating pork hog marred chitlins, fat back, greasy beef burgers, french fry mania, just love your fried food, your lovers of garbage, and you stink like a garbage pail. And if we could open you up, you'd probably have more maggots in front of, inside of you than they have in a garbage pail. The white man is killing you with your own mouth, killing you with your own hands. Merchants of death got these damnable supermarkets with these chemicalized processed foods. And you're eating them three, four, five, six, seven times a day and going to the bathroom once a week. Isn't that right, Dr. Torrey? Dr. Tory is the king of waste elimination in the world today. (laughs) 
This is what surrounds your gut. It's a pail. And it is garbage. Release the garbage. Dr. Torres says that your best friend is the toilet stool. But you only see your friend every once in a while. I don't tell you to go hug your friend. I don't tell you to go kiss your friend. I just tell you to go sit down with your friend. <laughs> <laughs> After a while, when the waist starts leaving you, your skin begins to shine. Your eyes begin to get bright. Yes, you begin to look better. You begin to feel better. You think faster. Your body responds quicker. Old age begins to walk away from you. As though old age had seen death. You begin to regenerate the cells. And instead of the process of decay, it is a process of renewal by waste elimination. Y'all all right? You live in the valley of the shadow of death. And death is all over you. And that's why when they come, they say, is that when did Jesus tell you to come in what is that that's the sign of the cross you see it on the ambulance when you're sick and on your way to die you see it over all the cemetery tombstones you sing the song I'm going to exchange that old rugged cross an emblem of suffering and shame for a starry crown. Well, we got your starry crown. Here it is. Why don't you come on and put it on? And now, and now, the one we have waited for, the one we have longed for, the one whose spirit we have been touched by, the one whose wisdom has nourished us. The one whose power has sustained us. But the one who was unseen. And now, live and in person. God is coming. God has come. To teach and to claim and to seek and to save and to find that which was lost. Who is more lost than the black man and woman of America and the Western Hemisphere? You are lost in white people who are lost in their rebellion against God. You become lost in them. How did you become the drug man, the pimp? You weren't a drug dealer in the Holy Land. You weren't a pimp in the Holy Land. You weren't gay or lesbian in the Holy Land. You weren't a whoremonger in the Holy Land. How did you become this? You got lost in the sins, in the perversion, in the debauchery, in the rebellion of your slave master. And so the Bible and the Holy Quran talk about Pharaoh and the children of Israel. Pharaoh had become so powerful that he was the only game in town. Pharaoh saw himself as a god and he forced the children of Israel to bow down and worship him but then one day God came in person and Moses saw him 
in a bush that was burning but was not on fire, was not being destroyed. Mm. Pardon me. Well, uh, anybody got another handkerchief? I use that. One. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my brothers are always there to help me. Thank you. God comes. He's in this burning bush. Moses sees him. The Bible and Quran corroborate that story. The Quran calls it the Valley of Tuwa. The Bible says it was a valley. He saw fire. He went to the fire. And a voice spoke to him out of the fire. He understood the voice. It spoke evidently in his language. It said, Moses, take off your shoes. The ground where you stand is holy. Moses was frightened. And the God said, Moses, I have chosen you to go to Pharaoh. Who am I to go to Pharaoh? I can't speak well. I, I, I have an impediment to send my brother Aaron with me. He, he speaks a distinct language. He, he's good at words. He was just frightened. But Allah answered his fear and said, Who made your mouth? I made your mouth, Moses. Go and speak to Pharaoh what I command you. He said, well, who should I tell him sent me? Remember, we dealt with that last week. Yeah. Tell him I am. That I am. That's a hell of a way to say it, though, isn't it? Give me your name, man. I'm knocking on the door. Say, who's there? I am. That I am. Nigga, get away from my door with my shotgun I don't know you tell me your name but you see I am is very good because I am is the present tense of the verb to be and what he's saying is I'm present I'm here now in person he said I have heard your moaning and your groaning by reason of your taskmasters and I have come to see whether your cry is altogether that that I have heard he came to kill Pharaoh but he wanted to disgrace Pharaoh since the whole world was worshiping Pharaoh he wanted to take a slave and whoop the hell out of Pharaoh with a stick just a rod that has some power in it. Oh man, that's heavy stuff. But that's 4,000 years ago, brothers. That's ancient history. It's recorded in the Quran, it's recorded in the Bible. What does it mean? We're not here for no ancient history class. Don't tell me nothing about how I am was I am. We need a I am today. We need somebody to deliver us as that one presented himself and delivered the children of Israel. Well, let's get that dollar out again. Come on, boy. Come on, girl. Or they don't even say girl, gal. Take out that dollar, gal. Take out that dollar, boy. A gal and a boy are children. Whose children are you? In the hell you are. You ain't God's children. If you were, you'd do the works of God. You are the children of Israel. This is Israel. 
boy. Gal, white folk treat you like little children, don't they? You have never been a man in their eyes. And whenever one comes among you that tries to be a man, they kill him because they want you always to be their boy. Am I right? Just talk like you got some strength and they'll try to kill you. They don't want no man. The children of Israel. Here's the star of David. Here's the eagle. And in the 24th chapter of Matthew, it says, wheresoever the eagles are, gathered together, there shall the carcass be. What is the carcass? It's the remains of what? of something that once was alive. You once were a great and living people. Now you are the dry bones in the valley of the shadow of death. Now in the Quran, Allah says, surely the hour is coming when all that are in their graves shall be raised. It ain't talking about people in that cemetery talking about you and me buried under the rubbish of the white man's civilization you're dead and dismembered dried bones in the valley of the shadow of death and every time somebody tried to raise you white folk destroyed him or you destroyed it. Now, he's the only game in town. But guess what? Guess what? Guess what? He came in person. Oh, Farrakhan, come on now. Come on. Go open your Bible to the book of Habakkuk. It said God came from T-Man and the Holy One from Mount Paran. Matthew says as lightning shineth from the east even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He's a man from a man, yet God. Stop. What's wrong with you? You don't think a man can be God? Didn't your Bible say you were made in the image and the likeness? Of who? Oh. Well, ain't that, if that's your son, don't you expect him to grow up to be like you? Well, if God made you in his image and likeness, what are you supposed to grow up to be? Oh, talk to me. You can master the forces of nature. You can master creation. God created us to be masters but we have fallen under the heel of our oppressor. And now a problem has been created that only God could solve. So the book said he came without observation. Like a thief in the night. What night? Was it last night? Was it the night before last? What night? Night doesn't mean a little 12 hour period of night. Night means when the people's minds were covered in the darkness of ignorance and they were not paying attention to the prophecies regarding the time. 
so he would show up as a thief in the night said if they had known what hour the thief would have come they never would have suffered their goods to be stolen well who's the goods that he's coming for he's coming for the sheep that was lost coming for you how would you know he came he came and raised one from our midst a man that only went to the fourth grade of school but he taught him well for three years and four months and then he went away he who the mighty one master Farad Muhammad the great Mahdi now the question is is he God in person or is he an imposter man could come and say I am God to a fool like us but can't any man do the work so the impossible problem was created has anybody been able to solve this but Elijah I'm talking about Elijah Muhammad that man spoke to us in our grave of ignorance and we came forward Elijah Muhammad taught us the science of eating he taught us the knowledge of ourselves the knowledge of the enemy the knowledge of God the knowledge of the universe he taught us the origin of the white race he taught us the time and what must be done he laid out a complete program for us that took into consideration our spiritual needs our intellectual and mental needs our psychological needs our social needs our economic and political needs our scientific needs our educational needs he set it all out for us and then he went away and left a black man in the midst of us to work for 40 years laying a foundation he pointed out to Elijah Muhammad a dreadful looking plane in the sky he told Elijah Muhammad that that plane look up in this dome look up in this dome look at the lights in the window see it's made like a wheel look at it good if you look at it, it almost look like it's turning not quite unless you had something to drink <laughs> I want you to look at this now Ezekiel had a vision and he looked up and he saw a wheel in the middle of the air it had eyes all around it eyes mean windows and eyes mean people looking out it run by the grace of God it was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night Ezekiel saw this 595 years before Jesus was born in a vision when Elijah Muhammad met Master Farad Muhammad in 1931 he showed him the wheel actually in the sky it's there now it's a half a mile by a half a mile it's like a city it has 1500 little wheels on it that are destructive bombing planes oh I want you to listen but well, you see this lion ain't roaring because he don't have no backup you know when that policeman calls for backup he can get bold as hell because he got a radio that gives him backup well I can get bold as bold as never been because I have backup I have God 
God in person. Let me talk to you. I don't want you to get spaced out on me. Because I'm not going to Spaceville with you. These wheels have been seen all over the earth. A white man calls them unidentified flying objects. And they are called above top secret. They don't even talk about it. And if you see them, they try to discourage you to make you think you haven't seen them. Many presidents have seen them and wrote that they saw them and said that when they came to power, they would make it known. And when they got in power, they kept their mouth shut. Jimmy Carter was one of those presidents. When I had a vision, and I'm not spooky, man, I won't lie to you if you put a gun to my head. No. I was taken up on the wheel in a vision. And I heard the voice of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad just as clear as you hear my voice. And he gave me some instructions. And I've been following those instructions and the instructions are so mathematically precise. Haven't missed yet. When I had the, uh, the press conference, I was told on the wheel to have a press conference and tell the people what the government's plans were. And I held the press conference in Washington as I was instructed. And told Bush what he was about to do. And I'm telling you, Bush was shook. Let me just tell you what I'm saying. I said, before you can make mockery of me, you will see the wheel over your heads. I left Washington. And the next day, the wheel appeared. And it stayed there for over a day. They kept filming it. Am I lying, Brother Minister? Did the wheel show up in Washington? Did they see it and picture it and put it on television? Whether you know it or not, I'm connected to that. No, 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 shut up, shut up. I don't want you to, I don't want you to applaud, I don't want you to say nothing. I just want you to think. Because I've never talked like this before. But it's time. I'm connected to that. It follows me wherever I go. You can read about it in Ezekiel in your Bible. Believe me, brother and sister, I'm not somebody you can take lightly. No, 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 no. You're going to answer for me. I've never talked like this before. But I really don't give a damn what you think about me. If I never see you again, you're going to meet every word that I spoke to you. There's power up on that wheel. And those powers are connected to the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam is not some little lightweight, rooty poop little group of people. We didn't start on our own. God started this. He came in person. That's why we look different from any person on earth today. Nobody looks like us. You know why nobody looks like us? It ain't just a diet. It's the presence of God himself in the word that we believe and the light and the power in that word illuminates our very being. We are strange people in your midst. You look at us but you don't know us. We grew up with you but you don't know us. We're strange people. Because we believe that God came. 
in the person of a real live human being who has power over all things and that human being raised up another human being the honorable Elijah Muhammad and that man called us out of darkness into this kind of light now this wheel has 1500 planes on it and each of those planes carries three bombs and the bombs on those planes are the same kind of high explosives that were used to bring up the mountains on the earth you say mountains brought up by high explosives yes yes the holy quran says and we raise mountains on the earth lest it convulse and carry you away the same way you put weights on your tire to give balance to your tire so you have a smooth ride down the highway the earth is oblong, not round. But you're riding a very smooth ride at the speed of 1,037 and a third miles per hour and you don't even feel the jolt unless God makes the earth quake under your feet. Why is your ride so smooth? It's because like you put weights on an imbalanced tire, God rose up mountains on the earth, lest the earth convulse and carry you away. How do you raise a mountain? Put a firecracker in sand. Put it an inch down and explode it and it'll bring up a mound an inch high. Put it down two inches and you'll bring up a mound two inches high. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the bomb have a drill at the end of it with a timing device and that drill is made of the finest steel the steel is not known to this world it's the same steel that's in those wheels it is not known to this world and if you read anything that the white man writes on unidentified flying objects they talk about a steel that they've never seen anything like it before don't you know that we the original people created all of this don't you know that we knew the white man before he came into existence and had prepared his destruction before he was even born? Do you think that this white man can overcome God? He's nothing to the power of the God who's on scene today. Listen, we're almost there. He says when that bomb hits the earth it has a timing device mechanism in it the drill goes off and it does not explode it just drills its way into the earth and when it gets a mile down it explodes sending up a mountain a mile high destroying everything in a 50 square mile radius those planes are deadly they move at speeds that this world has never seen before. They have motion that this world has not seen. They take off going straight up. And they can move right and left, forward and back, stop on a dime, move back, go forward. The, the, the mechanics, the dynamics, the aerodynamics of this has never been seen by the scientists of this world. Whether you're Russian, whether you're American, I don't give a damn who you are. You do not know this. We gave you only one book of mathematics when we gave you power to rule this world. There are 59,999 other books of higher mathematics that none of you have ever seen. The end of the white man is in sight. And your end is in sight if you don't straighten yourself up.
God don't care nothing about all the people that's on the earth. He intends to kill most of them. You've become like a hill of dung. Manure, you know what that is. None of you have justified your existence even on the earth. Everything that God creates justifies being here by being what God created them to be. Everything except man. You've become nothing. And unless you accept your own and be yourself, he's going to kill you. And I'm with him to do just that. Take it or let it alone. The wheel has been seen over every major country on the earth. And the scientists are gathering in different parts of the world trying to figure out what's going on. There's a new vegetation on the wheel. There are new seeds on the wheel. There's new life on the wheel. You don't age on the wheel. The wheel is made by God. It's like a city in the sky. And I saw a new Jerusalem. A city of like a city like a bride adorned for the groom coming down from heaven ain't no city coming down out of no sky it's a wheel and that wheel is as powerful or more powerful than the ark of Noah God had to put animals in the ark two of every kind because when he destroyed he was only gonna reproduce what was already here no Behold, I make all things new. I'm using nothing of this but just you if you submit. God in person. Yeah, he told Elijah Muhammad over about 60 years ago, he said that he would bring every wheel in America to a halt. I want you to listen good because you're going to face it. You that think America is a beautiful, huh? Think you can put your trust in Bush, huh? Or Clinton, huh? No, you're going to put your trust in God today. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. Gangbanger, huh? You want to shoot, huh? You're going to die in the street like dogs. Your day is here now. I'm telling you, man, if I never see you again, it's all right. Yes, sir. But what I say to you today, I don't ever have to say it again. Right. Let the word go forth to the ends of the earth. Yes, God is in person today. Yes, and he is manifesting his power in the West. He wants to make himself known. So he has allowed Russia to go down, everything to go down, leaving America as the only game in town because she's his meat. He said, I'm going to destroy America by myself. For you, for you, his people, he's going to kill her. And one from among you, he is already exalted. And I'm telling you, Elijah Muhammad don't love no white people. No, I don't, you don't need no applause. I don't care nothing about what you think. My father don't love none of them. And he have the power now to do what God want him to do. He's already at the right hand. That's the man you call Christ. He ain't no cracker. He's a black man that looked like you. Got hair like lamb's wool. You, you, you ready? Feet like burnished brass. See, you never did think nothing of yourself. But J. Edgar Hoover thought enough of you to know that the Messiah was coming right up out of you. God raised him. God taught him. God has empowered him. And the two of them are together like two arrows shot from the same bow and the two of them is back in me so I can't get weaker I got to get stronger got to get bolder I call Bush out for the fight 
You want the nation of Islam now. Talking to the president. You got rid of Noriega. You got rid of Ortega. You working on Gaddafi and Saddam Hussein and Castro. But in your house, you got Louis Farrakhan and the nation of Islam. Wait a minute. Whether you like it or not, black America's listening to Farrakhan. Whether you like it or not, there's no other black leader left. God has set them all down. Jesse down. Hooks down. Jacob's down. NACP gone. Urban League gone. Core gone. SNCC gone. The nation of Islam is the only game in town. The nation of Islam is all that's left of black people. But some of you don't like the nation. up in your heart because the nation that you thought was dead and would never come back is up now and moving. They'll never fall again. Never fall again. Never fall again. Now that God is clearing the deck, in the 60s there were many black leaders we could look to. God has cleared the deck. I didn't ask for the job. I was running away from it. But I can't outrun God. I've never thought of myself as no leader. The only leader I know is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, but he said he was making me to take his place among the people. Yes, and now I can't help myself. I'm on a course and I can't give up. We have a rendezvous with destiny. Pharaoh is upset now. Because he's the only game in town. Jesse has bowed down. Hooks has bowed down. Jacobs has bowed down. The church has bowed down. The black leaders have bowed down. But we, the nation of Islam, We'll never bow our knees down to this true-eyed devil. Jews want us to apologize. Farrakhan, if you'd only apologize, apologize for what? Told them crackers, man, I'm not afraid of you. You can't do nothing to me but what God permitted. If you, if you make your move, my God is going to kill you. Oh, I like to say that. I like to say that make a move and my God is going to kill you. I'm not talking about no spook God.
Con, if you'd only apologize, apologize for what? Told them crackers, man, I'm not afraid of you. You can't do nothing to me but what God permitted. If you, if you make your move, my God is going to kill you. Oh, I like to say that. I like to say that. Make a move and my God is going to kill you. I'm not talking about no spook God. I'm not talking about your God. I'm talking about the God who came in person to make us his people and he would be our God, the great Mahdi, the self-guided one who has power over all things. I thank him for his coming. Although I never saw his face, I thank him for raising up the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and empowering that man with wisdom unlike any wisdom I have ever heard before. And I thank him for allowing me to come into the fold and to believe. And because I sincerely loved Allah and loved the messenger and loved the truth and loved you, God allowed me to put my music aside to become a preacher of truth. And now with cassette and videotapes, a revolution has started. All over the country when I was at Michigan State I said I'm a little fella with a trumpet and the white boy put it in the paper the next day he said a little fella with a trumpet but his people are listening and that's what got white people frightened I'm the first black man in a long long time that the masses of black people are listening to and since God is sitting down those whom black people used to listen to and raising up the one he wants them to listen to then he's stirring up our enemies now I want you to listen because our enemies do not want to submit to the God who came for them and they want no part of the nation of Islam but as the nation gets stronger and stronger the government now has to attack the nation ultimately we knew that they would do this but it would be a moment of insanity See, Pharaoh didn't attack Moses until he went totally crazy. And it was when he attacked Moses, Aaron, and the children of Israel, that's when Jehovah drowned him. The nation of Islam, quiet as is kept, very beautiful group of people we love our people yes, we don't want to hurt our people yes, we've tried everything we know to avoid conflict with our people yes, and we will continue on that road yes, but I ask you in the name of Allah don't let the white man incite you to come against the nation our defense is in the Quran Allah said he urged the hypocrites on 
against us so he could get a chance to kill them at our hands. And Allah said, it was not you who slew them, it was I. See, God is no punk. God is not going to play with you. And he's not going to play with us. And he's not playing with those of us who say we believe in him. He's a real God. And he's angry. That's what is meant by the burning bush and the fire didn't consume it. A bush don't burn and is not consumed. He was on fire with rage against Pharaoh. And he wants to kill him. And every time Pharaoh would let the children of Israel go, God hardened his heart because he wanted to kill him. Master Farad Muhammad wants to kill America. And we are a dare. I'm like a dare. God is saying, yeah, that's my man. I dare you to touch him. I'll kill you. Now I'm going to show you. Brother and said, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. You see, God will answer me. Bush got the CIA, yeah, right. the FBI, right. the IRS. Yeah, right. He got all them letters yes, sir. and all the power working to bring me in front of some court. And if he can't get me in any court of law, he wants to accuse me of the murder of Malcolm yes, and then stir up our youth right. in a vengeful way right. so you would come against the nation thinking you're doing God a favor. Don't make that mistake. I'm going to tell you, you have never seen hell break loose. If you disturb this hive of bees, it will take God to take us off your behinds. I'm warning you in the name you. We are not enemies of our people. We are for you. We love you. We are given our lives for your redemption. But if you allow the enemy to urge you on against us, then we will kill you. In the name of our God, we will put more terror in your heart than you've ever known in your life to make you understand that God is real, man, and he's not playing today. So I say to Mr. Bush and the government of America, if you want to live, Leave the children of Israel alone. If you want to live, Mr. Bush, and your government and your people, stop your genocidal plans against black people. If you want to live, because we, we, we will live. And those of us who don't live, we can't die. Because we know that enemy can only kill the flesh. But he's late now. Too late. The word is in the children now. Your own little babies will rise up and cut your head off. If you punk out on their future today and act like some sissy. Here's a man that killed your people for 400 years and you're going to side with him against your God and the God of your salvation? Your children will eat you alive. That's a generation born. Born 
going to kill. We've got the most violent young generation that has ever been produced in the history of the world. That's not an accident. God fashioned it. America got to wake up. So the only game in town is Pharaoh. And the only game among black people that's in town is the little nation of Islam. The most organized, the most disciplined, the most unified, the most dedicated and zealous and made the wisest of our people. But that creates envy and enmity and strife. So we got to come together because the end is in sight. If you don't unite with us, who will you unite with? Your doom is already set by Washington. They're killing you with AIDS. They're killing you with all kinds of diseases. They're putting toxic waste near the black community that will poison your water supplies. They want silent death to gradually move us off the scene. But God is present in person. I'm glad that I know him. Yes, sir. I'm glad that he is my friend. Come on. I'm glad that the risen Christ yes, sir. is a black man. Yes, and I'm glad to know him that he is my friend. Yes, and the two of them are sufficient for me. So I'll take this message to the ends of the earth. And I'm warning my Arab Muslim brothers, yes, sir. get out of the bed of Washington, D.C. King Fahad, Saudi Arabia, get out of bed with Bush. President Assad of Syria, Get out of the bed with Bush. President Mubarak of Egypt. Get out of the bed with Bush. King Hussein of Jordan. Get out of the bed with Bush. All you black presidents of Africa. Stop kissing his ring. even try to get in the bed with Bush. That bed will get you killed. Your people are rising. I'm talking about the masses. And they are angry as hell. And they will kill kings and cast them down. Get out of the bed with Bush. Jesse Jackson, get out of the bed with white people. and come home to your God. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home was a band of angels coming after me. Coming to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. chariot of fire swing low let these crackers see you swing low sweet chariot let them know that there's another power beside white power the ants are stirred up the bees 
are stirred up. The flies are stirred up. He's killing them with pestilence. We got a God that's going to kill white folk today. And black folk that won't do right. Get yourself together. The shock of the hour. It's a grievous thing. And when you see that wheel come down, when God declares open war on this devil, you will see terror like you never saw it before. And you will bite your fingers in intense regret, saying, would that I had taken away with the messenger. Would that I had just believed famine is on the way in America. Won't be no more Wendy's. They won't be able to get a cattle to grind the beef for you to eat. The weather is changing. The greenhouse effect. The ozone layer depleting. The sun burning, sun spots casting flames out from the sun, 10 to 30,000 miles burning up and scorching the earth. Seas drying up, leaving the fish stinking on the banks in the dry parched mud. Draw no rain in the cattle looking up to the sun, gritting its teeth, wondering what did I do? And the God saying to the cattle, it's not you. I just don't want your master to fatten you up and take you to the markets. I'm killing the cattle. I'm allowing the fish to be poisoned in the sea. I'm drying up the produce of the earth. And go open your Bible and read. When the famine strikes, you'll be looking at your little fat babies with the thought in mind to eat your own children's flesh surely the shock of the hour is a grievous thing you better pray that your flight is not in winter your enemy is through the white man is through he looks like he got power but it's only for a few more days and in the twinkling of an eye, it'll be gone. And you who put your trust in money, you'll see the big tycoons with thousand dollar bills lighting up their cigars because the money will be worthless in the twinkling of an eye. You want to kill each other for this? You like killing, huh, brother? You don't want to kill your enemy. You want to kill one another? Well, they'll be coming soon. In the ghetto. With their tanks. And their 30 caliber machine guns. And if you've never seen the helicopters used in Vietnam, you'll see them used on the ghetto. God is going to turn your white friend loose on you and drive you to him. And whoever is left, he's going to kill your enemy. But he's going to teach you a lesson. When God speaks to you, you have a duty to answer. You are now in the valley of decision. It's your move. May Allah bless you as I greet you in peace.